It was apparent to me when I was a teacher, and then also apparent when I was a parent, if that makes grammatical sense, <laughs> that there was no room for real creativity in the curriculum. The Leaving Cert particularly hemmed it in, or excluded it almost. My daughter was advised not to write the short story for, I think, the Junior Cert and the Leaving Cert, because the marks were too difficult to allocate. Because, you know, how do you... James Joyce writes a, story, a short story in sixth year in school. How do you mark that? <laughs> you know? So it's, it's, um, it was mad, really, and very, very frustrating. So, and even the way the creative, right, the creative work of others was done in school, it was kind of line by line. What does this line mean? What does this line mean? three interesting things about this character that you have to write about. So the, the total slavery to the examination system, I think, killed off any possibility of creativity. And because when you sit to write, there's a certain amount of planning that goes on, certainly, but when you sit to write a short story, the plot is only a tiny aspect of it. Getting to know the characters, People remember the stories because of characters, really, more than anything else. Because of the way the story is told, not what happens, really. I think that's true in the most stories. That it's very open. You sit down with an idea, but quite often, by the end of the day, that idea is totally irrelevant, and you've gone on. It's given birth, if you like, to another idea. And that idea has given you a character, and that's the story. But you don't know that until you go deeper into it. And some of what you've written uh, in the first hours ends up in the bin. And that's a great day's work, you know. And I think being crammed into school time and being crammed into you must write a short story in a certain space of time doesn't allow for the very healthy process of flinging some stuff in the bin, yeah. you know, or changing your mind either at the very beginning or halfway through or coming to a conclusion and realizing, at the moment that makes no sense, but if I go back and start the beginning again, it'll be great. But if you're looking at the watch, and if you're, you know, obviously deadlines can be useful, but if you're looking at the watch, and if the watch is your master, you're not gonna be able to do the proper creative work. I remember there was a cartoonist, whose name I can't remember, but he said he had great difficulty persuading people that when he was looking out the window, he was working. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'd imagine looking at writer's work on occasion is a bit mystifying as well for people who do other things. There is a certain amount of just gazing, you know, and there's no optimum speed. I know the amount of words a day that I can write at relative ease. I know sometimes it's not about measuring words, but every writer has their own self-made routine. And I think any teacher will realize whether the class is 30 or 15, that you got 30 or 15 or 16 individuals who all have their own vocabulary, for example, their own creative strengths. Some of them will be brilliant at writing dialogue. Some of them will be brilliant at writing descriptions. Some of them will go into minute detail about little things. Others will make broad sweeping sentences about world wars. You know, some of them will want to write about something that happened in the kitchen over the space of 10 minutes. Others will want to write about the invasion of aliens over the space of millennia, you know. And allowing them to open up in that way it really allows them to be creative. No harm in giving them a possible title to write about, but let it be an open invitation. Not something that curtails the creativity. What we try to do at the very beginning is to make the whole situation as inviting as possible. So it's a shared experience at first. The students work at a screen. They see their words going up on the screen, shared words, in that one student will suggest one sentence, another will carry it on and suggest another or a group of students might form a little dialogue and it will go up on the screen and then the whole class builds on that dialogue, gives the characters names, for example, decides where they are and why they're saying this. And the story grows from that, a shared experience. And it's fun. It's a little bit of theatre in the classroom. 
Um, and it is, I've never known it not to be fun, and I've observed it so often now that it should be tedious, and it never is. You know, it really, really never is. Also, I think what the students get an awful lot out of, particularly older ones, but I think they all do, when they come away from the screens and start working on their own stories, to observe their peers doing the same thing, but not in a uniform way, to watch some of them filling pages really quickly and others pondering and writing slow sentences, and to realize that this is grand, this is fine. There's nobody telling them, you must have three pages done in 10 minutes or in 20 minutes. Anybody who ever went to school knows just how daft that rule, three, you must write three pages, is. We all know the trick about the slightly bigger margin and the slightly bigger handwriting <laughs> and skipping a line before every paragraph. You know, you can fill, if you have a will, you can fill three pages before the teacher's gone back to his or her desk. <laughs> it's no problem at all. So it's not about that. And there's nobody to say that this very long novel is better than this very short novel. I mean, they're probably both the length they should be. And it's, it's reassuring for the kids, particularly when they're encouraged to write at their own pace. Nobody's saying, come on now, hurry up, you have to have 300 words done, or you have to have 1,000 words done, or you have to have four pages filled. That a brilliant story can be a page, a brilliant story can be 20 pages, a brilliant novel can be 1,000 pages, a brilliant novel can be 150. There's no right length to it. And it makes no sense then to try and force 70, or beg your pardon, that's a big class, 30, 24 students into writing the one thing. That's not creativity. That's, that's something else. I don't know what you'd call it. That's homework, if you like. Not particularly wanted homework either. So what the teacher and the mentors say in Fighting Words do is make the whole thing as inviting, as pleasant, as calm, as fun, if that's a proper phrase, as, as enjoyable as it possibly can be. Hard work comes later, with older students particularly, coming to the end of the story. I know, again, from having written 12 novels, endless amounts of short stories, scripts, screenplays, plays, the really hard work comes in finishing. Finishing starts, if we knew it, we'd never start. The finishing starts from the very first sentence, really. You cop on to that when you're aware of it and you're prepared to live with that, you know. But if we knew that at the very beginning, that actually you have to keep an eye on the ending from the very start, it'd be tough. So, but they come to the realisation that all that energy they put into the beginning of the story, they have to maintain to the end of the story, and it's much, much harder. By the time they've started the stories and they own the stories and they've given the characters names and they... They, they want to get back to the stories. They put the extra work in to getting to the end. And that's, I think, where the teachers, uh, the temptation, if you like, to, to sit on the shoulders of the students and get them to work and work and work and work and get them to finish, or anything will do, just give me the paper. The temptation to do that, I can understand, is, uh, is pretty strong. And that's where you kind of have to just stay back and just let them out. I think um, creative writing is, in a way, project work. You know, um, the greatest thing that any writer, I think, can have, the greatest, um, I'm going to start again. Writing a story or writing a small play or creative writing generally is project work, I think, and should be seen as that. The greatest gift, and it's self-given, that any writer can have is resilience, tenacity, whichever word we choose. I like the sound of tenacity myself. It has a lovely ring to it. It's almost musical. And we all have it. And I think often it's not recognized or it's not appreciated in the school system. Because it isn't, again, measured in time, or if it is, it's patience with time. The willingness to come back again and again and again and again to make the story as good as it possibly can be. To worry it, if you like. To edit it. 
Any depiction of writing I've seen on a screen is always the writer writing. It's never the writer editing. Editing is not, if you like, understood in a way. It's not something that people really want to know about, but actually it's hugely satisfying. And the only way to edit is to have something to edit. So you write and you write and you write and then you edit what you have. And that's where it becomes project work. And research comes into it as well, of course. If you decide you're going to set a story in 1921, looking at photographs, maybe reading something that was written at that time, getting an old map on Google or something, or even a real old map from 1921, and looking at street names, are they the same as they were? Are there any streets that weren't there? Did the area where the student live exist in 1921? All sorts of, depending on what the students decide to write about, it branches off into all sorts of different areas. Structural, beginning, middle, end, you know? Uh, the ability to plan in that way. It's not unlike architecture somehow. The structure of the story itself, the logic of the story, Obviously, language comes into it, and the joy of that, the, the student's own language. And also, if he has a character, for example, or she has a character that comes from outside of their own little vocabulary, how do they find out how that character speaks? Somebody from Spain walks into the room and speaks English to these students. How are they going to achieve that? That's convincing. All these things gather together, and it's not strictly, you know, English, as I understand the curriculum. It's just kind of takes in bits of everything. I know, for example, that my degree in geography, it's old, but it's always been useful, an understanding of space. As a novelist, it's always been useful to me. And even the structure of a screenplay somehow or other makes sense to me sometimes in terms of it being almost like a map. You know, so there's all sorts of outlets and you know, arteries and veins that come into a piece of work that isn't strictly defined by just language. It's, uh, it's much, much broader than that. 